freedom. Today I wanted to talk to you about this one thing that this other guy that looks like me has to say. So, uh, hang on, go ahead and talk to him. Wait, no, don't talk to him. That would be weird. Um, listen to him. Freedom, I am sitting here with a Freedom partner by the name of James. What is going on? Uh, James does a show uh, called the Skepters, uh, Skeptics and Believers Show uh, here on YouTube. Uh, link in the description if you want to check that out. Um, where you talk to um, uh, people of different uh, theistic beliefs as well as atheists. Well, what we do actually is we bring people of diverse opinions. It doesn't necessarily okay. have to be just... Uh, like Christians and atheists or, or religion, though that's where it's focused right now. It's actually a live event in Murfreesboro where everybody's invited to come. So if you're ever in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, you can come uh, hang out with us. Check us out. It is every Sunday. Now, um, the current physical venue is where? It's at the Experience Church right now. It depends on how many people we have, but right now the Experience Church is letting us use uh, their venue and their rooms and things of that nature. Sometimes we have pizza, sometimes we don't. It's a lot of fun. Okay. So if you like pizza. I, I love pizza. Yeah, see? There you go. What kind of pizza, though? Pepperoni pizza. Are we talking about just like standard pizza? Are we talking about like Chicago style, New York style? Directly from Chicago, in fact. What Direct happens, we have it delivered from Chicago specifically. Oh. Yeah. The guy shows up and he's just like, da bearish. Yep, that's exactly what it is. All right. Technically, you can't prove that isn't true, so. Um... So now this now you've done a lot on YouTube in in the past. You had uh you did a thing where you reviewed games. Yeah, I've been on YouTube for about 9 years now. First started out with my own personal channel uh called Lesoyo and then I did uh game reviews from the Gaming Heretic until we found out a lot of people uh really wanted to start doing live events. So now we started doing live events with the Skeptics and Believers. Okay. Um and now, so you've you've worked with um, game developers. You've worked with uh, people of all kinds of different, diverse uh, cultures and belief systems. What advice do you maybe have for finding people to work with on the platform? Oh well, it's all about networking. Uh, so regardless of what you want to do, the, the things I would suggest is networking, getting with uh, smaller YouTubers, or if you're in gaming, getting in with small uh, developers, small gaming. Um, like people who make games and things of that net, um, getting with networks and uh, really just getting out there and doing your own events and, and making your name known. That's how I did. Uh, like the way you and me are friends is that I just started talking to you everything and started uh, getting in with the Freedom Network and people at the network. So now I have friends in gaming. I have friends within YouTube uh, networks itself, not just uh, Freedom, but others. And uh within the atheist and Christian communities and things like that. Again, it's all about so, knowing people. Now, when you, now you've used the word network in a couple different, um, uh, couple different ways here. Um, now, you, you were talking about freedom, but you also, when you say networking, you're talking about the, like social networking. We're not talking about like Facebook, Twitter. We're talking about just like meeting people, shaking hands, kissing babies, that kind of thing. Yeah, so, well, when I was talking about networking, what I meant was getting to know people within fields of what you want to do. So... Uh, at first, I started out with my own personal channel, and that was more starting out with uh, Christians and atheists, and I reached out to other channels that were both Christians and atheists. When I went into gaming, uh, which I did for a long time and got pretty successful with it, I reached out to small-time uh, small de game developers. I worked with them, did reviews with them, and then I was able to use that to do the bigger ch channels. So, for instance, I worked with Telltale Games... Uh, which is, mm -hmm. was, they were smaller at the time. And now that I have a good relationship with them, I've used that to do AAA titles. Or I did when I was under. When Very, I was nice. Very nice. Very yeah. nice. Um, so as far as, um, uh, now skeptics and believers right now, you said it's a live event. Now um, it's my understanding from a conversation we were having earlier that that may transition to into more of a podcast thing? No, so what what's happening right now is we're doing live events, we're recording it, and we're putting it on YouTube as well as starting to do iTunes. So it's still staying in a podcast format, but the focus is going to be within, uh, quote-unquote, networking within Murfreesboro itself. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be doing live events where everyone can come. I'll be recording that, and then I'll be putting it on YouTube itself. So it's it's a podcast, but my focus is more growing it 
uh, locally because I think that's what you need to do when you're doing a channel. So if you're going to have a niche or something you're going to do, uh, find how you do it and then and then um, expand on that. So I want to grow within Murfreesboro, which eventually will grow both the podcast and the channel on YouTube. So, like, for instance, when you're doing gaming and things like that, do RPGs and get really good uh, friends and with them developers with RPGs and things like that. Yeah. Um, so uh, you were talking about the concept of, like, kind of finding your niche or your target and then kind of expanding from there. Um, and I'd like to go ahead and say that uh, there are some really good... Uh, there's re some really good information in Freedom Academy on how to do that, which we're either about to relaunch or we just did relaunch uh, with a brand new host. Not sure where that is. Um, but uh, yeah, really good information in your dashboard about that. Uh, almost done course style, like um, YouTube certification or uh, Udemy course. Um, so now you said you've been on YouTube for what? Eight, nine years? Yeah, nine years or so. Nine years? Um, who would you say is, out of all that time, one of your favorite people to work with? Oh, I don't know. No don't fair know. saying me. Because uh, sure I, I, I know that would have been your first. Yeah, everybody else said that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I've worked with so many people. It depends on, on how you want to look at it. Because there are, I've worked with so many people. Um, man, that's a good question angry joe hugged me once did he yeah that was fun was uh, it an angry hug I, he always he always hugs angry okay um never hug angry don't never, hug angry never hug angry never go to bed angry with angry joe um love you joe if you're ever watching this daddy is but if you ever do uh man i don't know that put me on the spot i'm not i'm not really sure i've, I've worked with so many people that just so now you've you've gone to conventions, correct? Um, what conventions have you gone to? So that's again that works it in. When I was doing the gaming network, the um, one of the outlets that I did was going to like gaming conventions. So I did Wizard Con, mm -hmm. Comic Con, uh, and several little um, conventions as well. Which is what uh, you should start out doing. If there's conventions in your area, just find little conventions and go to them mm -hmm. and network that way. Uh, and just do things that are even on the. Um, are some are of the interest of niche like um oh there's one it's an anime convention i forget what it was but they also have anime games there so i did that for a little while as well so yeah um now what's your experience there i mean uh do you find that they're good for um for getting contacts with companies or more for people or both well you have to do it effectively so if you're going to go to a convention the first thing i would suggest Depending on what you want to do. If you're going there just to be like a fan and do fan um, stuff, then just talking to people is fine. But if you're trying to grow a brand, what I would do is I would contact the convention itself or the person who's running the convention and position it as if I'm uh, like a media outlet uh, like that and wanting to do interviews and things. And what I did is I contacted them stating that I'd put... Uh, footage for them almost in a media style and then did interviews with different people and then after that i would interview um people who came to the conventions and things like that but the focus should be on what you want either it's going there as a fan and just doing it i don't know whatever um markiplier way or doing actual interviews and trying to grow your brand that way okay um, have you ever found anyone to collaborate with now, i'm not talking about interviews but maybe somebody you work with after the fact at a convention Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, multiple people. What's fun is when you're going there and you find other YouTubers. <laughs> uh, and then you get to connect that way. So you'll be surprised how many other YouTubers go there and they're doing videos. So I've, I've met them and then done uh, collaborations that way. So do you, um, like to facilitate that, did you ever wear like uh, like maybe a shirt that said YouTuber or something to make that blatantly obvious? Or? Oh, it's all about... Yeah, I mean, again, it comes down to what you're wanting to do. For me, I was branding the Gaming Heretic. So when I went there, I had a pullover jacket said, The Gaming Heretic, join the heresy on the back. It had my name. Uh, if someone was going with me and they had the video camera and everything, they had uh, the Gaming Heretic on it and whatever their name was, if they're a part of it. So, yeah. So And there was YouTube logos all over it as well. Yeah. So it's going to cost you a little money, but if you're going to go and you're going to 
push a brand, definitely, because people will walk up to you, hey, I'm doing a YouTube thing too. And that also gives you that professional edge right. too. One thing I noticed while I was at VidCon is that um, the people who either, um, they, they gave off a professional vibe or they sort of had that, you know, some um, bit of polish, they got away with a lot more. Mm -hmm. they, being in places they shouldn't have been in, saying and doing things they should have <laughs> never done. When we first started out, uh, that reminds me of a funny story. When we first started out, our first event convention we ever did was BlizzCon. And uh, I didn't... Blizzard's weird on the way they do it because they don't tell you if you're approved or not until like two weeks before it happens. And you can't buy tickets based on that. So I didn't even try that, though I wish I had. I was still new. Uh, so we just showed up with cameras and everything. And we had people walk up and tell us we needed to get in the media press side, which was a faster line uh, to get through because we just showed up with cameras and everything. I just yeah. assumed it was going to be cool. Yeah, it was a funny event because we had on again we had the gaming heretic stuff and we had big cameras and they told us to get into the media press line so um uh this this guy at uh, freedom headquarters and i named steph mm -hmm. um he and i was showed up at uh, like asia pop con i believe it was and we showed up uh we had media badges mm -hmm. but there was always different staff working but much like you you know, they saw the big camera. They didn't even check our credentials. They just waved us in. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's just, just show up. Just, uh, you know, be branded to the nines and act like you're there. Act like you were meant to be there and you're the one that they all want to see. So you're a family man. Yes. Yes, I am. Well, actually, the reason I ask about that is... That, to me, means that you have to do a pretty heavy balancing act between, you know, between work, play, daddy time, um, you know, time with the wife, etc. That's got to leave you pretty ragged. Sure. Well, uh, when I worked, it was it was pretty difficult. It still is. Luckily, I'm, I'm in a position where I don't have to work and I can do YouTube full time. Uh, but so you don't see YouTube as work. Like, is that is that because it's your passion or? Well, yeah, but I mean, what I was going to say is that it, I, when I do, when I'm recording and everything, it's done at night when everyone else is asleep. So ah. I have a choice. I can, uh, I can choose, if I choose to do YouTube or I choose to record anything, then it's going to be when everyone else is asleep and I'm sacking my own sleep to do it because I'm focused on family and other things, especially when I worked. So it is a sacrifice. Yeah. So uh, do you have any time management tips? Anything that you've found works for you? Other than just recording while everybody else is asleep? <laughs> um, well, I mean, it's come down to, you know, anyone who does YouTube, unless you're PewDiePie or someone who can pay others to do it, you understand that you do everything. So it's not just recording a video. Uh, you have to record the video. You have to edit the video. You have to do the thumbnails. You have to do everything. What I found is to do a little bit at a time throughout the day. Now, all my recording is done at night when everyone else is asleep. But after I get that recording, uh, I can find times during the day uh, when, like, my kids are sleeping uh, to edit the video. And then uh, towards later towards the night, I can then... Um, put in the information and upload or set the upload schedules and everything. For me, what works best is just scheduling out different tasks for different times. So I, I uh, do all the recording at night and then I'll do the editing sometime in the morning. Then I'll upload it and I'll do all the tagging and the descriptions and setting the schedule uh, in the afternoon. Okay. So what works for me. So you don't always have to block everything together. You can split it up. Uh, throughout the day just keep to that don't don't uh, let apathy get in there so um be, i'm asking you this because you've good, done all kinds of different styles mm -hmm. you've done the more kind of vlog style and i assume there were response videos things like that mm -hmm. you've done gaming mm -hmm. you've done now you're doing something more podcast related um do you ever find yourself getting ahead like you know knowing Everything that's going to come out this week is filmed and ready. I, you know, now I can worry about two weeks from now, three weeks from now. You ever get 
to that point where if you did have an emergency that took you a week, like you, know, you get pneumonia or whatever, that you'd be covered with constant content? So there's a couple of things that I do for that. And I'm, I'm sure I saw some of this on Freedom uh, and through other. So what I do is I look at what other people do and get other tips as well. But what I would suggest is generally my content is week to week because of the type of style I do would require me to be uh, current events. So if you're doing like a makeup channel, I don't know that you don't, you can't schedule it out three or four weeks or things like that. So for me, it does have to be week to week. It'd be very rare that I'm two weeks in advance and know what I'm doing. Uh, what I would say is that if events happen, when you do a channel, you should have your main content. Like with the Skeptics and Believers, we do the podcast. We do the things where people are, um, where we're having the conversations and things. But you should also have a, a backup or a B-roll because it's important that you get information mm -hmm. up there. Uh, so find something that isn't as taxing that you can keep on the back burner or something that you can put together really quick and then throw that up. So as you said, uh, I do vlogs, I do gaming. I, I've done vlogs, I do gaming, I do things like that. Now I'm in podcasts, and I think that's where my niche is. That's what I've really found. But if for any reason uh, I need to, we need to go a week without it or an emergency happens, then I already have my vlogging uh, background, so I can just do a quick vlog and throw that up there and keep it going. So cross-transferable skills. Yeah, and uh, again, B-roll, just something that's really easy. So if you have a gaming channel, what I do for B-roll on that is I used to, I did game reviews a lot, mm -hmm. uh, but I had a um, a skit called Nintendo that I used to do, and it was just a funny little character where I could just pick. Uh, it was based on Nintendo. It was a parody of things, stupid things Nintendo did. So all I had to do was go to the news, look up something stupid Nintendo did, use my character. Boom! That's a lot easier than doing a complete game mm -hmm. review. Or you can just do. Um, and of course, you need to make sure for copyright and things, but you can. Uh, you can also just do like playthroughs, like a quick playthrough, like here's a level of StarCraft or whatever you're doing. Just just B-roll that's really quick you can put up. Okay. And, and you can do it and keep it on the back burner so that if you ever needed it, you just threw it up. Kind of like keeping a funny moments video just chilling there for Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's dependent on what kind of channel you're doing, but... Have you ever um, messed around with... Um, I, know, I know these are a lot of different features I'm about to throw at you, but... Um, it, Facebook live streaming is a somewhat new thing. Facebook video, Twitter video, um, Twitter live streaming through Periscope. You ever mess with any of that? Yeah, so the brand is you, or the brand is whatever you're putting forward. And YouTube... Uh, can be your mainstay, but it shouldn't be the only place that you are. So I do do Facebook Live. I do do um, Twitter Live. Now the brand. Can we just pause for a moment and and take a little bit of a moment of pleasure? The fact that I got him to say do do. All right, moving on. Yeah, everybody wins. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I was going to tell. Now they can't have all of the rich information. No, they need the rich information. So, uh, so for me, the brand is me because we're doing live events, live podcasts. So on my Facebook Live or on my Twitter, uh, I put up videos of me where people can interact with me and everything. Again, your brand is not just... Um, don't keep your brand only on YouTube. Uh, find a way to get your brand out there with Facebook and other things. Um. Okay. I, I think we've covered a lot of really good ground here. Um, is, is there anything you want to plug? Any kind of social medias? Any kind of, you know, things before we go? Well, there's two things I would like to do. I said one. Well, you get two. Okay, fine. Because you make fun of the DJ. Okay, fine. First off, I'm going to say that uh, if you like doing YouTube, you should figure out how what works for you on YouTube. You shouldn't just stop. Uh, I think you should stay committed. So if you want to do vlogs and you've done vlogs for six months to a year and it just for some reason doesn't feel like it's working out, then maybe you should try gaming or you should try a way to make the vlogs work. Uh, don't just give up because it doesn't seem like it's working. I have done YouTube for nine years and have done very numerous things and uh through networking and through working with that, I'm now at a point where uh, I've gotten a lot of momentum. So I would say keep at it and find new ways to do what you love and try new things if it doesn't work. And you can also go on to uh, the, first off, you can check in the description because it's going to be there, but you can also go to YouTube, type in Skeptics and Believers. You will find our podcast there. Or you can find me on Twitter at, at DevoutJames or last but not least and i want to see you there go on to facebook and type in skeptics and believers or go to facebook.com forward slash yeah facebook.com forward slash skeptics in 
just the letter N, believers. We'll find it there. It may also be linked down there. Yeah. Unless you're finding this on some channel who pirated it because this content's so awesome. Um, actually, you know what? I've been finding a lot of people like ripping off the Anthony show on other channels. Oh yeah, they do that. It's uh, random. I think it's bots, honestly. Yeah. It's 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 been happening to a lot of my channels um, too. I had a, a, a point before you plugged your, your next thing. I, I forgot what it was. Freedom. I'm I'm failing here. Oh, uh, you're going to be on iTunes soon, aren't you? Yes, going to be on iTunes. Um, and another point I wanted to um, put out there, as he said about, key, you know, hashtag never give up, um, is that, you know, James is in a situation where, you know, he's been doing YouTube, been doing YouTube. Now he's found a way to, to take that YouTube thing and transfer it into an IRL in real life thing. But still, YouTube is on the on the back end helping um, with, with the whole thing, but not driving it. So I think that's a really good, you know, thing to keep in mind is that YouTube doesn't always have to be at the forefront. It can be a supporting character. Yeah, I agree. I mean, again, you just you have to find what works for you. Anybody can find a way to incorporate YouTube to do what they want to do. It's just a matter of how and where. For people like uh, Angry Joe or for Markiplier, that's what they do. That's their job. For people like me, I've found that the city of Murfreesboro absolutely loves our live events. And uh, so YouTube is more back end than it was front end. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and kick it back over to me there in the studio. Uh, and we're going to we're gonna get weird. We're going to have some fun. Yeah. Till next. Yeah. Julius, get me out of here. No, no. Thank you for watching another Freedom video. If you'd like to watch another, click over there. If you'd like to, I don't know, maybe subscribe. Maybe you'll want to stick around for a little while. There's probably some buttons over there that'll help you out with that. And if you'd like to see more of my face, go ahead and click it. I dare you. I dare you.